So let me go to part two. The freedom to be in a relationship. Before I go to that, let me uh, see what Felix says. Felix says, until gay people can manage to give birth to gay people, they shouldn't expect straight people to support them by giving birth to gay children. So this is a topic that I will handle. Felix, I'm handling this one. Hold on a bit. Part two, the freedom to be in a relationship. The Bible is a book of principles. Adam pleaded for Lot and his family as God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Adam asked, what if 50 upright people were living there? Would you destroy it? What if 45 upright people are living there? Would you destroy it? What about 40? What about 30? What about 20? What about 10 people? And here you'll find one common thing that as a Christ, as in Christianity, we don't look at the numbers. We look at the issue at hand. And that's why we look for one lost sheep, even though we have 99 sheep. We look for the salvation of that soul, that it becomes free from sin. And we look for freedom to express the love that is within us. And we want to express our freedom to be in a relationship. A relationship is important for individual fulfillment, to feel complete within yourselves. That's why many people will ask you, when will you marry? Why haven't you married? Aren't you thinking about getting married? I want to get married and settle down. We don't feel settled until we marry. We look for someone to share our experiences with, including our struggles. Statistics actually show that if you want to succeed quickly, then marry quickly. That marriage helps people to move forward in life. Another reason why it's important to be in a relationship is to build something worthwhile and leave a legacy. Why are we here? Why do people say you are he, he died but he was survived by so and so? Those things come through a relationship. And in that relationship, there will be sex. And sex is important for procreation and for bonding. You may be mad at your partner, but you still want your partner to be close to you. Sex is also important as a sacrifice. That this isn't an item that you can both get from other people, but we choose to only get it from each other. So it is a symbol of commitment between two people. And gays want sex in their relationship. Isn't that reasonable? We have seen the importance of relationships. Shouldn't we want that for gays as well? We have seen the importance of sex in relationships. Shouldn't we want that for gays as well? Shouldn't that be the issue as opposed to the numbers that they have or do not have? Shouldn't they be free to have homosexual sex if their sex is private? if their sex is consensual and if their sex is between adults shouldn't they be free and so i ask this question another question where does our freedom come from does it come from god for example the declaration of independence of america says that People have certain inalienable rights. And among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Does it come from the people? Like the way our constitution begins, we the people. Does it come from the government? For example, again back to the Declaration of Independence. 
it says that the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, they are endowed by God. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. So we have all of those things. We have the government, we have the people, and we have God. Where does our freedom come from? And we have to go back to the concept of authority. Remember, the LGBT community is relying on the authority of the government to repeal 162. So they recognize the importance of authority. And they are going to that authority to seek help. So what authority do Christians recognize? Christians recognize the authority of God. Remember, the practice of rights is only as strong as the source of authority for those freedoms. So if the source of your authority is weak, then the practice of those rights and freedoms will be weak. And if we rely upon God as the source of our rights, then who is more powerful than God? And if that it comes from an almighty authority, then no one can interfere with our rights. And if somebody interferes with God-given rights, then we have a God-given duty to fight for them. But if it comes from the government, governments change. And so your rights will change. The principle of authority. The soul is the prince, spiritual principle in humans. It's the subject of human consciousness and freedom. And freedom, the principle guides us towards God in whom we are free. And that's why somebody says, Alexis de Doc Quivel, liberty cannot be established without morality, nor morality without faith. So that your freedom comes from a given source. The source of moral law. And that source comes from faith, a belief in God. Because without him, then what is morality? Where does morality come from? So these are just some of, some of the things. The irony of the LGBT community, most of them do not believe in God. Therefore, their freedoms come from the government. And if it comes from the government, like they're trying to seek this time, then the people decide what freedoms you will enjoy. And if they decide that you will have this freedom today, tomorrow they can decide that those freedoms will not be there. That is why when you want to quote your freedom, you need to know who you are quoting. Are you quoting the government as the source of your freedom? Are you quoting the constitution as the source of your freedom? Are you quoting God as the source of your freedom? And if you're not quoting anyone, then to the victor belongs the spoils. Then anyone can interfere with your freedoms. And they will. So the concept of authority is important, I think. But we are Christians and we believe in God. And we must consider the suffering of others, imagined or otherwise. We must examine their arguments, because it is written, Come, let us make things right. Other translations say, Come, let us reason together. Even if we don't believe in certain rights, even though we believe in a supreme authority who and who uh, tells us not to uh, pursue certain ways. Still, we must consider the torment of our fellow brothers and sisters because we are Christians and we are called to bring as many souls to peace and to truth as possible. 
again if free will comes from god then who are we to take free will from others isn't that a mutiny against god himself should we deny people the benefits of a relationship the benefits of sex when those benefits come from god are we god Shouldn't we examine the arguments and see if they are making sense, if perhaps they aren't against our faith? And here's the beauty of Christianity. Christianity says, faith and reason, they never contradict. Christianity says, do not be afraid. Why? Because faith is always above reason. So even if you reason with uh, homosexuals, even if you uh, evaluate the arguments to the fullest extent possible, the church teaches, the church, right, that such reasoning would not contradict with your faith. And when you reason to the farthest extent possible and you can't reason even any further, faith is still above that reason. So you can still rely on your faith. So personally, I choose to reason. I choose to examine these arguments because I believe by examining them, you can inform the gay community. You can bring them from where they are or you can understand them. And if they have some truths in them, then those truths cannot contradict with my faith because my faith is a faith of truth. So I do not fear examining the arguments. 